for basic geometry, the 1D model at 180 degrees. To begin our examination into the underlying geometries of time travel, we look first to the centroid point, extended into a linear measure that describes one extension of the centroid point onto a plane surface, the sum of all which can be described as the circle surrounding the centroid at the distance of the line. We mark these measurements thus, the centroid is the past, the radius the present, and the circle the future. The 2D model at 45 degrees. In the next model we can see the same shape turned to a 45 degree angle from its previous depiction and given form extending into an additional dimension. This is also how time works. It adds spin in a fourth direction whose change can be measured as the dimension of duration. By adding an extra dimension to the simple circle, we produce the sphere seen here with a clockwise spiraling top pole and a counterclockwise spiraling bottom pole, the 1D model at 90 degrees. To return again to the simple circle model expressed as a flat plane, we see that in order to be able to visually depict the addition of an extra dimension, we can add a twist to the plane on which the simple circle model occurs, such that from along the side of the simple circle we now see the infinity symbol. The 3D model at 45 degrees. In this model, also the creation of Dutch artist Martz Knitlius Escher, we see the effect of the addition of an extra dimension of motion to the prior model of the twin spirals on the poles of a sphere. In this model we see the tube torus shape formed by the expanding contracting spiral as the twin spirals are extended over duration being caused to autocorrelate or self-connect. This is also a model for infinite recursion. The 1D model at 45 degrees. Finally, in terms of models constructed on a plane space from the original simple circle, we can examine this two-knot loop depicting a view of the simple circle's plane space from along the edge, as well as the cross-section of a tube torus. This diagram was drawn by Aleister Crowley and the labels reflect the zodiac the 4D model at 45 degrees, and finally in terms of a comparable shape to the last two prior patterns combined, we see the trefoil or threefold knot. This is the result of taking a tube torus and adding an extra dimension of motion or spin to it. Then, instead of only clockwise or counterclockwise, there will be an additional direction for spin or rotation. Here we see the shortest distance between any two points on this model may be a straight line only if it does not follow along the surface of the model, but instead breaks the surface to travel outside the model entirely. T4 Intermediate Geometry First, let us look at some four-space manifolds, or M-brain shapes, that represent the typical looped Calabi U-shaped structures we find in hyperspace timelines. To begin with, we have a simple, infinitely repeating feedback loop of two wormholes connected by a single, twice-looped time tunnel between them. In the next depiction, we see the position of the previously depicted three-knot, or trefoil, shape is measuring a single continuous surface that has three loops in it, and it has three points of crossover juncture where a straight line could connect between them along a shorter distance than by following the continuous surface. Here we see the tube torus demonstrating a dual twist internal to the tube as well as a simple circle around its radius. The dual twist in this case reflects the 4D hyperspatial dimensional nature of the object, showing us that the torus is another term for a hypersphere, or a sphere nested within another sphere. Finally, in these wireframe models of embrane temporal surfaces, we find an exploded, that is to say schematically expanded, trefoil surrounded by three toroid loops. The trefoil itself is formed in the middle, while at each of the three main axes of rotation for the model, there is an ellipse representing a torus. Geometric gnomon. The concept of a gnomon is similar to that of a fractal. However, while a fractal blacks out in some spots to form dead spaces, where the patterns self-terminate, a gnomonic pattern yields perpetual regeneration of the original shape that can be scaled up or down in n dimensions, that is, beyond the infinity of counting numbers. In this diagram, we see color-coded all the different motions that can be taken along the lines and arcs of the previous diagram, depicting a typical example of a simple gnomonic form of replicating pattern. 
Here we see that the midpoints of the green, the red, and then the blue lines are labeled in alphabetical order in the sequence ABC. The blue arc is labeled as the square root of 2, the green arc as the square root of 1, and the red arc's intersection with the green arc on the left, the square root of 1 half. We see the vertical lines measure space while the horizontal lines measure time. T4, Advanced Geometry. Here we see a linear depiction of a one-knot shape such as those introduced briefly by the three-knot trefoil diagram seen before. This simple one-knot is to the curvilinear manifolds of four space, equivalent to the simple circle in Euclidean geometry. Next, we see a standard depiction of a three-knot that has its three knots nested in a column up the center rather than arrayed around and about its central axis or like petals on a rose. In looking at this model here, we note that it is at a 45-degree angle from the position we will be looking at it from next. In this depiction, we find a rough skeletal framework for locating the torus at the center of the three-knot that has all three loops aligned along a central axis. The torus is in the dead center, hiding in plain sight in the form of a minor optical illusion. In this next rendition of the same model, we find the torus labeled with the signs of the zodiac as given previously by Crowley, and the trifoil surface rings itself being measured by a small model of base 4 over base 3 structure depicted out of sequence in the key to the lower right that measures 12 rotations around this three looped trifoil's flat surface. Here we see the most thoroughly labeled version of only the innermost illusory torus from the previous three axial loops trefoil knot, showing space as rotating around from past to future on the ring shape, while time is revolving around in the same direction on the ring, however opposite and parallel to space when measured at the midpoint. This toroidal wormhole shape occurs on all scales, from the subquantum superluminal tachyon to the hyperspatial multiverse surrounding our local space-time continuum. T4 wormhole geometry. In this next section, we will be discussing how to create a wormhole. There is much discussion in the modern scientific journals about how to establish an open portal using quantum entanglement and action at a distance, and much speculation about how to increase and control the diameter of the wormhole using exotic matter, such as strange quarks or possibly antimatter particles. This diagram depicts the standard model by astrophysicist John Cribben. While there remains much discussion about the time tunnel portion of the equation itself, shown here on the left half of this coffee table, there is little consideration for the cause for the equally drastic warping to the surface fabric of the continuum on the right side. In this diagram, I offer the premise that a black hole operating at a roughly right angle from the time tunnel itself could affect the drastic warping of space-time on both sides to form the time tunnel on one side and the 180-degree bending of the surface fabric of the space-time continuum on the other. T4, Wormhole Mathematics. In this model, I am depicting the entry vectors necessary to penetrate from between the blue arc representing an event horizon in motion to the centroid in the lower left corner representing the conjunction of the combined motion of the exterior surface of the event horizon in blue and interior trajectory of a tangential wormhole within the black hole in red and the law of infinitely repeating halves in a mnemonic pattern of expansion contraction that in converts the dead space within a black hole to the baby universe within its core singularity. These are the extrapolated sets of trajectories for motions possible on the previous model. We see the blue line represents the event horizon, the red arc the tangential wormhole, the green arrow the path to or from the singularity, and the black line the motion of an object outside but relative to the gravity exerted by the event horizon. Those models calculate the mathematical trajectories for entering a black hole. 
The following diagrams represent the mathematical trajectories for navigating any wormhole. Here we see a square, each of the corners of which exerts a pull affecting the trajectory of any object passed from one corner to another along its surface. Here what we are seeing is the individual trajectories given all overlapping in the previous diagram. Here it exploded schematically to each be viewable individually. Here we can see the above left combines the two on the left below it, while the upper right combines the models below it on the right. Each trajectory is plotted with a different origin and destination pair, and thus each has its own pattern of path. T4 Cosmology in this diagram, along a file to the right, we see the now familiar set of four space manifolds that represent time. We see then on the left that each of these four space manifold shapes corresponds to one of the elemental forces in our local universe. Also, in a progression of decrease in complexity following the inverse square law outward from the Big Bang, depicted in the upper left corner of the matrix. In this model, we see the manner these now also elementally attributed four manifold shapes correspond to the geometric gnomon discussed initially in the second section. The gnomon in this diagram thus traces the division of the four elemental forces prior to the first Planck time following the Big Bang. T4 Conclusions and Findings The most basic initial premise for the geometries of the T4 models is depicted here. We see time labeled T conserved around and about three axes of direction labeled X, Y, Z. The meaning of this diagram is that T surrounds the three dimensions as well as permeates them throughout. Below C, the speed of light, space-time operates in the direction past to future, but above C, faster than photons, time-space operates in the direction future to past. Here again we see the trefoil on the right labeled according to the shadow it casts on the left. These labels and the outline of the trefoil's shadow are the initial T4 premise depicted. Here is the final depiction of the T4 model for time travel. We see time space above and space time below may be between their layers, able to be warped and twisted, allowing a body to be carried along a pathway around opposite the standard temporal current without violating the natural laws of physics at play. This is the essence of the elsewhere drawn out rolling boil diagram for the surface of the continuum. In this final diagram of the set, we see the central three spheres represent from top to bottom past, present, future, but that the pole but beyond the lowest inner sphere of future is past, and likewise that the pole beyond the highest sphere, that of past, is future. So we see there are larger cycles and smaller cycles that operate relative and can even be reversed to one another.